Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insightful podcasts by insights into things. A podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome in to Insights into Teens, episode 77 burnout. I'm your host, Madison Whalen, and my co-host, Joseph Whalen. Hey, Maddie. How you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. How about you? Doing all right. So today we are going to be talking about burnout, and this was something that I had recommended um, for a podcast idea, which is why I'm once again hosting, just like last week. Very good. So today we are going to be talking about the definition of burnout and what burnout is. We are going to look at the signs and symptoms of burnout with the different physical, emotional, and behavioral um, uh, signs and symptoms. Sorry. Then we're going to look at the causes of burnout. And then we're going to f- look at the at dealing with burnout and how you can, um, in a way, cure it. Although, you know. And then we're going to look. And then we're going to go to our closing remarks and shoutouts. Okay, sounds like a good show. You ready? I am ready. Alrighty. Let's do it. So first up, we have the definition of burnout, and this and everything that I looked up came from a website called www.helpguide.org, and all of what we found of what I found is on this site. So, burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. It occurs when you feel overwhelmed, emotionally drained, and unable to f- meet constant demands. As the stress continues, you begin to lose interest and motivation that lead to you to take on the certain role a certain role in the first place. So basically burnout is when you have when you're exhausted, you're losing motivation, and you're basically tired and don't feel like doing anything. Yeah, and I think we've all kind of experienced burnout at some point in time, whether it's, you know, excessive schoolwork. Uh, in fact, I think thinking from a school standpoint, by the end of the year, I think a lot of kids have burned out at that point in time and really look forward to that long vacation. But even professionally, you know, the same type of thing happens where you always have something to look forward to. You have some vacation, some time off or a holiday, and you sort of gauge your burnout to the occurrence of that. So I think we've all experienced it. Yeah, I definitely think that many people have experienced it, if not everyone has will has and will experience it at some point. The negative effects of burnout spill over into every area of life, whether it be your home, work, and social life. Burnout can also cause long-term changes into your body. So burnout can, can affect every part of you, mentally, emotionally, physically, and your entire lifestyle can change because of burnout. Absolutely. And, and as a result of that, it can cause it to affect other people as well. Because as you start to burn out, you start to react very differently to other people too. So you have to be careful of that. Yeah, I definitely think that burnout has many negative effects. And, I, and if you do have burnout, you kind of need to know what's been going on like burnout can affect everyone around you and yourself included absolutely so so next we are going when we come back after a quick break we are going to look at the signs and symptoms of burnout okay sounds good for over 
over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Starforge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. And we're back. So today we are going to look right now. Now we're going to look at the signs and symptoms of burnout. Burnout is a gradual process. It does not happen overnight, but it can creep up on you. You should look out for these symptoms if you feel you might have burnout. You could be cl now. I know um, sometimes with some segments when we have like the causes of something, you normally ask me if I've experienced these. So I'm going to flip the table and I'm going to give you the symptoms and ask if you've had any of them. So, um, so you could be close to burnout if every day is a bad day. Um, you... Caring about your work or home life seems like a total waste of energy. You're exhausted all the time. The majority of your day is spent on tasks you find either mind-numbing, dull, or overwhelming. You feel like nothing you do makes a difference or is appreciated, and most days feel help. And most days you might feel helpless and overwhelmed. So, have you gone with any of those um, symptoms, Daddy? I think it's fair to say that at some point in time I've experienced all of those. Um, I don't think, I think I've been fortunate enough to never experience all of them at the same time, in which case I definitely would, would be totally burnt out. But generally by the time I get up to a weekend or I get up to a vacation point, I'm, I'm suffering from one or two of those. Now, how about you? Have you experienced any of those symptoms? I mean, especially when I had first gotten my mood swings, I felt like every day was going to be a bad day, especially Mondays. That was one I immediately related to. Um, for the second one, I didn't really get that, I don't think. Um, I think I was just always wanting to try my best for trying to care about work and home life. Um... I wasn't exhausted all the time, but I did occasionally get tired at, especially in mid, um, at the start of middle school, I would get kind of tired. Um, but yeah, I've definitely, um, experienced some of these, but not all of them. Well, that's and, good. I think, I think anyone who's experiencing all of these has probably got some serious issues that they need to take care of, um, other than just burnout, because a lot of these things, could be signs of depression. They could be signs of physical illness. Um, they could be a combination of a number of things to get you to this point, too, that ultimately do lead you to burnout. Because, you know, I've had situations where I've had prolonged illnesses or injuries, um, and they prevent you from doing the things that you want to do. And over time, that sort of wears you down. It wears you down, you know, wears your spirit down. It wears your motivation down. And when that starts to happen... All of that stuff can contribute to burnout. Mm -hmm. So the website listed three different types, uh, three different groups of symptoms you can feel if you do have burnout. So first they listed physical symptoms, and these include feeling tired and drained most of the time, frequent headaches and muscle pain, lowered immunity, frequent illness, and a change in appetite and sleep habits. Now, have you ever experienced any of these, Daddy? Well, certainly feeling tired and drained most of the time, I've experienced that. And again, that usually goes hand in hand with um, an illness or something. You know, I had bronchitis at one point in time, and it took me like three months to finally shake it to get over it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you are, you still have to get up and go to work and do your job and take care of the stuff around the house and all that stuff. 
And uh, when you have factors like that weighing you down, you burn out much faster that way. Um, headaches and muscle pain, you know, I'm old. It sort of comes with the territory, I think. Um, but the lowered immunity, because I'm diabetic, that weighs on the immunity system as well. So um, I've improved things by taking a pretty robust um, vitamin regimen now. So fortunately, I don't get sick as often as I did. Uh, but change in appetite and sleep habits, you've, you've seen times where I don't sleep for three days at a time, you know, during the week. And, and I, you know, I can deal with one or two days of, of poor sleep, but it catches up. You know, it's one of those things where if it happens too often by the end of the week, you know, I'm ready to just sleep all day long. So, yeah, you get, you get some of those physical symptoms. How about you? I know you've had some issues with sleep in the past and, you know, you've had some issues feeling tired and drained. So have you experienced any of these physical symptoms? Well, I mean, feeling tired and drained, that was kind of a thing that I'm pretty sure many people my age at school would feel like, mainly because of the sleep habits, because we wouldn't really get enough sleep. And I mean, I've gotten better, but um, before, it was kind of hard for me to fall asleep, and I've also noticed the change in appetite. I have actually been changing my appetite a lot. Like, sometimes I can eat my entire plate, and sometimes I can barely finish half of it. So, I've definitely experienced some of these. The next group we have is emotional symptoms, and um, these have a lot more than just the physical symptoms. So, emotional symptoms can include a sense of failure and self-doubt, loss of motivation, feeling helpless, trapped, and defeated, increasingly cynical and negative outlook, detachment or feeling alone in the world, decreased satisfaction and sense of accomplishment. So, have you ever felt any of these emotional factors? Um, yeah, I've, I've experienced a good deal of them. Um, I don't think I've ever actually attributed them to burnout, though. Uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, usually, you know, I've gone through periods of depression, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, you know, stuff like that, where there have been trigger points in my life that have caused some of these symptoms. But at the time, and I, I had never thought to even attribute them to burnout. And it's entirely possible that burnout may have led to some of these symptoms, you know, the sense of failure and self-doubt comes when you when you're out of work you know you're you don't feel as though you're serving a purpose loss of motivation well that happens on a fairly regular basis just from day-to-day -day activities feeling helpless trapped or defeated again that's one of those things where if you have a big project and and you feel overwhelmed you you tend to self-doubt tends to creep in um increasingly cynical and negative outlook with the way the world is today. I don't know how do you, how you not have a somewhat cynical outlook on life. You know, it seems the, the further we get into the pandemic here, the more cynical and negative things seem to be, uh, the detached feelings, uh, and feeling alone. That's more of a depression. I always equate that to more of a depression type thing and the decreased satisfaction and self accomplishment that's one of those things where if you don't have goals set for yourself, it's very difficult to generate those types of positive feelings. So sometimes it's that lack of goals that can do that. Um, but again, all of these can be signs of burnout. How about you? What, what of these have you experienced? I mean, failure, definitely. Whenever I never came home with a perfect day, I definitely feel a sense of failure. Loss of motivation. I've been feeling that a lot in quarantine because, well... I really don't have much motivation at this point. I've gotten much lazier, and it's kind of hard to stay motivated at this time. And Mommy's definitely tried to get me out, and I definitely appreciate her for that. Yeah. Uh, helpless, trapped, and defeated. I definitely felt that when I was in sixth grade. Um, once again, sixth grade was one of the worst times of my life. That was really when things spiraled down. Um, I did feel very sad when... Um, I felt as though my emotional outbreaks would never stop. That was when puberty immediately hit, and it was not one of the best years of my life, so. Um, negative outlook, I definitely had that in sixth grade. I'm definitely trying to get a 
better and more positive outlook. But like you said, with the pandemic going on, it's been harder to have that positive outlook. Uh, feeling alone in the world, I never really felt that because I had really close friends and you and mommy, and I really felt as though I wasn't alone. Uh, um, feeling decreased satisfaction and sense of a and sense of accomplishment. I never really felt that. I always like had um felt really happy with my accomplishments. I think the only time I've seen you feel that is the one time you came home with a B yeah. in your math your advanced math class. You were very dissatisfied and disappointed in yourself. Um and, and that again, that's because of how hard you are, but being that hard on yourself can very easily lead to burnout and a lot of these symptoms. The final group we have is behavioral symptoms. These can include withdrawing from responsibility, using food, drugs, and alcohol to cope, isolating yourself from others, taking out your frustration on others, procrastinating and taking longer to get things done, or skipping work or coming home l late and leaving early. So, have you ever experienced any of these? Uh, some of them I have. Um, withdrawing from responsibility, I don't think I've had the luxury of that. Um, being you know, holding the position I do at work and being having to be a responsible adult for the most part at home. Um, <laughs> you know, you can't get away from your responsibilities, right? Mm -hmm. um, using food. I mean, all you got to do is take a look at me. You know, food is t typically you know, my coping mechanism. So if I'm burning out or if I'm depressed or if something's bothering me, that's usually where I get my comfort from. And that's, that's probably the biggest crutch that I have. Um, isolating myself from others. Well, I do that on a regular basis. So that's really not something that I can say is a sign of burnout for me. Yeah. I honestly, though, if I'm burnout, I tend to congregate around others. That's, that's usually when I pull people closer to me. So I can try and feed off of, you know, their energy and enthusiasm and stuff like that. So if you see me showing up for movie nights or wanting to do game nights with the family and stuff like that, when I'm or if I want to go out somewhere, that's usually because I'm burned out and I need a I need a break. I need to take step away and have a distraction from what I'm doing. Um, taking out my frustrations on others. I usually don't do that, although some of the equipment around here would would beg to differ. <laughs> Uh, if I take out my frustrations, it's usually on inanimate objects. Yeah. Procrastinate, well, I do that all the time anyway, so that's just a character trait of mine. And skipping work or coming in late, uh, I very, again, I very rarely do that because there's too much responsibility at work. I don't, I don't have the luxury of just leaving earlier or coming in whenever I want. Um, so I can't use that as a coping mechanism. But again, I throw it back at you. Of these, what have you experienced? Well, probably not anything with withdrawing from responsibility or skipping school or anything like that. Um, using food, um, I mean, my main source is chocolate. Like, you guys would have spare chocolate around the house, and whenever I had a bad day, you just give me chocolate, and it would make me feel better. Uh, isolating myself. I normally do that when I'm really frustrated because I don't want to scream at people. So I normally isolate myself when I do feel sad, but normally you come in like with your happy energy and try to cheer me up. And I appreciate that. Uh, I'm taking frustration out on others. Same thing with you. Not with people. Inanimate objects. I scream at inanimate objects. Procrastinating. Um, I mean, sometimes. Like... I remember sometimes doing the notes, I would sort of procrastinate. I, like, have somewhat of a short attention span, and that's kind of common for most kids. So procrastinating is definitely something that I sometimes do, but not on schoolwork. I don't normally do that on schoolwork. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, now we're qu going to quickly talk about the difference between stress and burnout. S um, stress is... It involves too much of everything, too many pressures, too much of you, of you physically and mentally. Burnout, on the other hand, is about not enough. Being burned out means feeling empty and mentally exhausted and demote of motivation. 
While people who are stressed see some hope in recovering to change their situation, people who are burned out see no hope of a positive change to their situation. While you may be aware that you are stressed, most people don't notice when burnout happens. Kind of similar to what you said, like, you saw some of the symptoms, like the emotional symptoms, and you had no idea that they could have been causes of burnout. Exactly, yeah. And we've talked about stress. We've done a whole podcast on stress in the past. So we know how to identify stress and recognize stress. And I think the important takeaway here is that, like you said in the beginning, burnout is a gradual process. And that gradual process is influenced by the different stressors that you encounter in life. So the more stress you have, the quicker you'll burn out. Everyone burns out eventually. You can't keep going at at a breakneck pace constantly without burning out. And what determines that, obviously, is your ability to cope with stress and how much stress you're under. But stress itself, even though some of the symptoms may appear to be burnout, stress itself is not burnout, but it can lead to burnout. And I think that's the important takeaway here. Yeah, um, that's probably why the article included it, because people can probably um, mislead burnout as stress and stress as burnout. Absolutely. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll look at the causes of burnout. Okay. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. So there are many different causes of burnout, whether it be from your job, school, or even at home. And once again, the website put these in the different categories for work-related causes, lifestyle causes, and even personal traits. So let's look at work-related slash probably school-related. So tell me if you felt any of these. So um workout related work related causes can be feeling like you have little to no control of your work, lack of recognition or reward for good work, unclear or overly demanding job expectations, doing work that is mon- monotonous. Monotonous or unchallenging or working in a chaotic or pressure filled environment. High pressure filled. High pressure filled. And you know it's funny Pretty much all of those kind of define what my work is, <laughs> with the exception of monotonous and unchallenging. The work that I do is always challenging, and it's not monotonous. But monot- when they say monotonous, it's like the boring work, the the simple, tedious stuff you do over and over. Um, but, you know, I don't own the company, <clears throat> so I don't make the final decisions on things, although I'm in a position that I have to make decisions. Sometimes I can't make those decisions, but that's just a factor of middle management and the way that work, you know, industry tends to work. Um, Lack of recognition or reward, that's not so much. Usually at work, they're very keen, you know, the owners of the company are very keen on recognizing the efforts that their employees put in. So there's never been an issue with that. Um, They're very generous, very understanding. Um, I, I kind of have a unique relationship, uh, with the owner of the company, the one owner of the company, and, and we kind of have a love hate relationship. Um, uh, but we, I think we both respect each other. We understand what each other does. Um, and, and a lot of it is just stereotypical 
you know, your IT, so, you know, you're, you're a drain on the company and I, I tolerate you. And, it's, you know, that's sort of how he portrays himself. But I'm very fortunate to work at a company where the owners recognize your value and they're willing to invest in the projects and the things that, that we need to take care of where other companies I've worked at before don't, they don't have the foresight to, or haven't had the foresight to invest in that and see that the work that I do, even though I don't directly make money for the company, the company is dependent on the infrastructure that I support. And a lot of companies, a lot of company owners don't recognize that. And I'm very fortunate where I'm at where they do. Um, there's always overly demanding expectations, especially when it comes to the type of work I do, because not everyone understands what I do. Uh, we get a lot of people that come in and say, you know, they, they want to tell me how to do things. And sometimes you have to stop them and explain that it's not as simple as just flipping a switch. It doesn't just work. Um, there's a lot of magic that goes on. Um, working in a chaotic and high pressure environment, that's kind of what I like, you know, it's, it's something different every day, every day I walk in, there's a different scenario that I'm dealing with. Um, and that chaos making order from that chaos is what I thrive on. It's what I do best. You know, when I come in and the sky is falling and the building's burning down, you know, I'm. I, and I'm at my best under those circumstances where I can come in and crisis manage and put all the pieces together and recognize what resources I have and utilize those resources. Um, and it's that very reason that it's not a very monotonous or unchallenging environment. It's challenging every day, and that's what keeps me interested. Yeah, like you also get a satisfaction from helping the chaos. Absolutely. What about you? Do you experience those things when it comes to your schoolwork? Um, having little or no control of my work, I definitely feel as though I have control of it. I have control on when, of when I do it, how I do it. Um, and that's where my creative liberty comes in, especially in like some of my more ELA classes where I was able to write a creative story. I was, I definitely felt in control. I was able to use my creative liberty and make a really nice story. So. A uh, lack of recognition for or reward of good work. Um, I actually don't feel that because my school um, definitely um, knows the good work I do and for other and the good work other students do, and they definitely reward us. So I, I definitely feel as though I wouldn't have this. So unclear or overly demanding expectations. I mean, that's kind of the heart of middle school. You get. As you get older, things get harder. You get more responsibilities, and there are going to be higher expectations. It's just the way it goes, honestly. So, I, honestly, it's no real problem with that. It's just nature of it. It's just the nature of it. Doing work that's unchallenging, I really wouldn't say, like, they had a good amount of unchallenging and challenging work, so I never really felt that. Working in a chaotic and high-pressured environment... Mm, definitely when we had to go into quarantine, that's de that was definitely a chaotic and high-pressure environment because we were all new to it. So, yeah. yeah, I guess that's the only thing I actually felt out of it. Okay. So next up, we have lifestyle causes. And once again, I'm going to ask um, if you've experienced any of these. So, lifestyle causes can include working too much without enough time for socializing or relaxing, Lack of close and supportive relationships, taking on too many responsibilities with, without enough help from others, and not getting enough sleep. Well, I can definitely attest to probably one. Um, I tend to, again, it's the nature of the of the work I do. I tend to, to, it requires a lot of time, especially if there's a lot of after hours work that I do. Um, as far as not enough time for socializing, I'm not much of a social light. You know, I'm not the type of person who, who spends a lot of time with others, but I do like my relaxation time. Uh, so if I don't get enough of that, I get very cranky very quickly. Yeah. Um, close supportive relationships, that one I can't say I, I have a problem with. Um, the, 
The family relationships that we have here are incredibly rewarding. Uh, and that's what I look forward to. You know, I, I go to work all week long. You know, there's not a lot of interaction that happens during the week, but that's because we all have our own things to do. And I look forward to the weekends because the weekends are where I get to recharge. We get to hang out. We get to podcast together. We get to have our talks at mealtime. And that's really what I live for. Um, taking on too many responsibilities with not enough help, that happens, you know, and that's sort of the nature of things. That's why I try and I tell you to whatever it is that you're doing, break it up into smaller chunks. Um, so managing those types of things, project management is, is really what helped me get through those. And I don't think I could ever get enough sleep. Um, <laughs> my problem is I can only sleep for so long before, you know, my back hurts or this hurts or that hurts and I have to get up. Um, but yeah, I'm always, always looking to get more sleep if I can get more sleep. But I'll, again, I'll throw it back at you. What are your thoughts? Um, working too much. I never really had that problem. Um, I mean, of course, I would push myself to always finish my homework before I did anything else. And sometimes it was a bit draining, but um, it wasn't a constant thing. So I wouldn't say working too much. Um, I had enough time for relaxing, especially in the summer. Like, I'm relaxing almost 24-7. Socializing. I mean, I do call my friends, and I do talk to you. So even though it's harder to have the whole social life now, but... You know, we are still able to manage. Uh, lack of close supportive relationships. Um, I definitely say I have very supportive relationships, including my friends and you guys. And like I, like we said in the, in our last podcast, um, good, healthy, and supportive relationships are very good for your mental health. And especially in the friends one that we did a little while ago, that was, it was definitely, Definitely having good and healthy relationships proves very positive effects. Uh, taking on too many responsibilities without enough help. I mean, I sometimes felt like that, like, especially in the beginning with, especially with math. I had no idea what square root, what square, square roots were. I had to actually get mommy's help for that because I really had no idea what square roots were, but once I was able months um she told me i was able to um do the work much easier so um i kind of had that not getting enough sleep mm, it's something that i'm pretty sure many people suffer from and i mean i've gotten better but i i don't have a specific sleep schedule anymore so i kind of need to work on that okay so next, so the final group we have for this segment is personality traits that contribute to burnout. Now, um, this was something interesting I found because I had no idea that personality traits could have influence. So let me know if you have any of these personality traits and if you can understand why they'd be called what why they'd be connected to burnout. So, some personality traits can be perfectionist tendencies. Nothing is ever good enough pessimistic view of yourself and the world, then you needing to be in control or reluctance to delegate to others, a high-achieving type A personality. So, are any of the personalities some things that you've experienced? Uh, some of these things, yeah. Um, I don't think I'm a perfectionist myself. Um, I'm a mostly good enough type person. <laughs> I tend to impose some of the perfectionist stuff on other people. Uh, and I think some of my employees at work would attest to that. I can be pretty annoying with that. <laughs> uh, the pessimistic side of things. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think I'm pessimistic. I consider myself realistic. Uh, you have a lot of people who are optimistic to the point of being delusional where they always think it's going to turn out right in the end. And I come from a background in emergency management um, where I learned that you always have to hope for the best but plan for the worst. And that planning for the worst tends to have get me labeled as a pessimist a lot of times. And really it's just a matter of making sure that you're prepared for when things happen. But you hope they don't 
you know, I would much rather spend 10 hours preparing for a storm that's coming, you know, battening down the hatches, cleaning up stuff that's in the yard, all that type of stuff, rather than do nothing and then have, you know, thousands of dollars in storm damage afterwards. Uh, so I, I don't have a problem putting the effort in and appearing pessimistic because I think something's going to go wrong. Uh, the need to be in control, I, I do and I don't. Um, I've never been the type of person who was a very good follower because um, I tend to be very critical of the decisions that other people make. And I just assume take on the responsibility of making those decisions because I have a very analytical way of looking at things. Um, a lot of people that I've worked with or worked for in the past tend to make uneducated decisions, which when they make them, I, I have the luxury of sitting back and saying, well, I wouldn't do that because these five things could happen. And then when one of those five things happen, I, you know, invariably I'm the type of person who will say, I told you so. You know, so you should have listened to me in the first place. And again, that also makes me look like a pessimist, too, because up front, I'm telling you what's going to go wrong. But it's really a matter of planning ahead. Um, high achieving type A personality. That's probably not me. I think I'm a type A from a don't like to follow people. Um, but it's not because I need to be the best. I'm not very I'm competitive in certain things, like a type A personality, but there are other things that I'm willing to, to sit back and delegate and let other people do. Um, what about you? What are your, how does your personality fit into these models? Well, for perfectionist tendencies, most of the time things are good enough unless it mainly requires my creative ability. At that point, my perfectionist tendencies are in full swing. Like, I can look at a drawing I made and I'm like, oh, there's a mistake there, I've gotta fix that. The eyes are too close together, or the eyes don't look right, or something like that. Um, but when I'm tired and I'm doing something creative, I'm like, uh, whatever. Good enough, good enough. Um, for the pessimistic view, um, Definitely before, um, I had a very negative look on myself and the world. Well, mainly the world. Um, I never really was able to see the ups. I've definitely gotten better. I have more of a re realistic standard like you have. But what's changed? What caused that to change? Well, um, for one thing, the influence of you. I... Um, I noticed how you saw the world, like, there's always going to be ups and downs to everything, and especially the main example, like, some people see their glass half full, some people see it half empty, you see it as, you see it as, there's, how did you see it again? How, how, you know, how did that liquid get there? Yeah. Did it get there by pouring it in, or did it get it by pouring it out? Yeah, you have the more realistic view, and that was definitely a big influencer for me to stop thinking about the negatives. And you also said that if you think about the negatives, everything's going to go wrong for that day. And, I mean, you were right. When I started thinking more positive, things started to go better. Um, so it was sort of a mental um, inspiration from you. So. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, for the need to be in control... Before, I kind of had that tendency. It was sort of more of when I was definitely a more perfectionist, and it was mainly with group projects, because there's always going to be that one person who wants everything to be right so they get a good grade, and I was kind of that person. Like, I was focused on the project, and I wanted everything to get done, and even, and like, even now I kind of have that, but I'm way less controlling. I, like, I give everyone different parts, I help them out if they need it. Um, I'm definitely way less controlling than I used to be, um, but I still have that sense of control, especially when people don't do their parts, I'm that person who has to do most of the project, and everyone gets the credit, so... Yeah, I understand that. Alrighty, uh, for the high achieving, I mean, I set pretty high expectations, 
for myself and I don't normally always achieve them and that kind of has a negative effect on my um mental on my mental aspect of it but um I'm not entirely sure I'd be extremely high achieving like I'm still somewhat saying good enough, but with certain things, my perfect, like I said, my perfectionist is like, okay, we gotta make sure we're good enough. We gotta make sure everything is good and perfect and great and amazing. Um, and for some other things, it's just like, eh, it's good enough. Right. So, yeah. Um, when we, um, come back, we are going to talk about dealing with burnout. Okay, sounds good. So, once again, I have this sort of split into smaller groups. So, there are many different ways on how you can deal with burnout. And the first way is to turn to others. When you are burned out, it is difficult to take action or even care to try and help yourself. But there are some positive steps you can take to deal with overwhelming stress and get your life balanced. One way is to reach out to others. Um, and I definitely agree with that because other people, like like you said, you normally turn to us to ha- when you are burned out um, to have our positive energy and excessive energy flow through you to make you feel better. Absolutely. And I, and I think a lot of people who are fortunate enough to have the kind of support structure that we have from a close family uh, can lean on that family a lot. Some people lean on extended family. Some people lean on their friends. Some it's just their coworkers. Um, but I think everyone at some point in time needs someone that they can turn to if for no other reason to just confide in and unload. When you when you talk to someone about the burdens that you face, you sort of spread that burden out across multiple people and you don't feel like the world is on squarely, you know, on your shoulders at that point. Yeah, definitely. So, um, There are a few ways on how you can reach out to other people, and I'll give you each one, and you can tell me if you agree with it. So, the person closest to you, such as a, such as your partner, family, and friends. Opening up won't make you a burden to others. In fact, most friends and family would be flattered that you trust them enough to con, to confide in them, strengthening your relationship with them. Now, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Um, you know, you don't want to be a burden to other people, but just the ability to talk about these things can help. And you may not expect or need any kind of response or anything that, that comes back from that other person, but just the ability to talk through the issues themselves can be a huge improvement. Yeah, definitely with you. I definitely felt like with you guys, I, like you already know, I felt as though it was a burden to you guys because I'd constantly come home with my problems, I'd tell you guys about it, and you'd try your best to try and fix it. And at that point, I kind of felt like a burden to you guys, but you, you're you my parents. I'm meant to be a burden on you guys. And, right, so. and that is why we described you as our little burden. Yep. <laughs> Uh, next up is being social with your coworkers. Developing friendships with the people you work with can help you can help buffer you from job burnout. When you take a break, instead of directing your attention to your smartphone, try engaging with your colleague colleagues. Now, this might not be um you know relevant in your case since you're not the most sociable person, like you stated before. But do you at least agree with it for other people? I do, and I have a friendly relationship. The, I think the reason this is less applicable to me is the people that I interact with most at work are the people that are on my staff. And I'm the type of person, I'm a very old-fashioned person when it comes to you know management like that, where I don't think a manager should have a very close personal relationship with his employees, his or her employees, because it makes doing your job as a manager much more difficult. Uh, sometimes you have to make difficult decisions at work. Sometimes you have to say no or you have to discipline your employees. And when <clears throat> you have a very close personal relationship with them, it makes that difficult. So 
while I'm friendly with my employees, I can't have this kind of interaction with them. And I don't really interact frequently with other people in the organization. We're kind of, we're IT. We're the weird guys that are kept in the corner, you know? So <clears throat> there's not a lot of interaction that I have. But should I need to go and talk to my manager or one of the other uh, executives in the company, I, I, I feel totally confident that I could if I needed to. Um, I just don't do it because I don't, I don't interact with them on a regular basis as it is. But there are times that I, I have had to do that. Um, but it's less applicable to me, I think. Um, and the final part for this one is limit your contact with negative people. Hanging out with negative-minded people who do nothing but complain will only drag your, down your mood and outlook. If you have to work with a negative person, try to limit the amount of time you spend together. Now, would you agree with limiting contact with negative people? Absolutely. I don't even... You know, I go beyond the limiting to eliminating contact with negative people. Uh, you know, I run a gaming group online and we have, you know, three, four hundred people in our gaming group that I interact with on a regular basis. And the people that are the negative ones tend to work themselves out of that group pretty quickly because the core group of people that are in the in that guild are like minded to me. You know, we're very accepting, we're very positive, we're very, I'd even say outgoing, but outgoing in an online sort of way. And the people that come in that are negative, they get into the group because we're open and accepting. But when they see that the group really doesn't support that kind of personality, they work their way out quickly. And I try to adhere to that same philosophy in life and, and not be around negative people because they're just going to drag you down. So the second way you can ha you can um, deal with burnout is reframe the way you look at work. Whether you have a job that leaves you rushed or one that is unfulfilling, the most effective way to combat to combat job burnout is to either quit and find a job you love instead. Of course, for many of us, changing our job is far from being a practical situation. We have to work to pay the bills. With whatever your situation, though, there are still some steps you can take to improve your state of mind. Now, once again, I want to see if you can agree with these. So, try to find some value in your work. Even if in some mundane jobs, you can often focus on how your role helps others or provides a much-needed product of service. Focus, uh, focus on aspects of the job that you do that you do enjoy, even if it's just chatting with your coworkers at lunch. Changing your attitude towards your job can help you regain a sense of purpose and control. Now, do you agree with this? I do, and, and that can be challenging at times. And it's one of those things where you have to find the positive in things. Uh, when you get cynical and you get negative and you get beat down, it's hard to find the positives. Now, I would turn this around and ask you to look at it from the perspective of school. You know, how would you find value in your schoolwork if you reach a situation like this? I mean, I would say look at how you're, look at, like, find enjoyment that you find, like, in your work. Like, do you enjoy, what in part of your work do you enjoy? Do you enjoy having creative liberty in projects? Do you enjoy um, giving your opinion on certain situations? And outside of school work, do you enjoy hanging out with your friends at lunch? Do you enjoy some of the extracurricular activities like art or music? Or do you enjoy, or you do enjoy being active at gym? Not exactly relevant to me, but you know. Right. <laughs> Okay. So, yeah, I definitely agree with looking for the positives in any situation. So, next up we have find balance in your life. If you hate your job, look for meaningful and satisfaction everywhere else in your life. Like in your family, friends, hobbies, or, or voluntary work. 
Focus on the parts of your life that bring you joy. Now, would you agree with that? I think that's probably the the best coping mechanism that you could come up with. Um, not every well, I'm very fortunate in my work in in that I get to w- do what I love to do, working with technology, and I get to do it for a company that respects me and owners that I respect. Not everybody's that fortunate. You know, sometimes, especially when you're early on in your career and you're starting out, you kind of have to do your turn in the trenches. And I did that. There were a lot of jobs that I had that I didn't like, but I had to pay the bills. So you sort of grin and bear it. You go, you do your work, you come home. And it's that support system you have at home that kind of keeps you going. That's what you look forward to. I like to this day, even though I love what I do, I don't work to live I don't live to work. I work to live. And it's when I, when I walk out of the office and I come home, that's when, you know, that peaceful, relaxing enjoyment time starts. How do you feel about that when it comes to schoolwork? I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure many of my, many students my age would definitely agree with that. Like, Going home after a really long day of work, especially if you had a bunch of tests that you had to study for, realizing that you can now have the satisfaction of relaxing, and especially if you have a good supportive family, um, it's definitely one of the best things that happened. Especially when I was in sixth grade, coming home was the best part of the day. I was able to unwind from anything bad that would have happened, and I was able to hang out with you guys, so I definitely would support it as well. Nice. Um, next up, we have, once again, making friends at work. Having strong ties in the workplace can help reduce the counter, the count, reduce the counter effects of burnout. Many friends, having friends to chat and joke with during the day can help, can help relieve stress from an unfulfilling or demanding job. Improving your job performance or simply get you through the, through a rough day would you agree with that i would agree with the concept of it um i don't practice that myself because i really don't have any friends yeah um but do you find that that works for you when coping with school stress and and burnout i mean yeah whenever i um when we were able to go in school normally um Lunch was one of the best parts of the day because I was able to see one of my best friends. We were able to talk and unwind with each other about what had happened through the day. And we were able to get um, through our whatever small issues we were going through. And we were just having a good time. And I also look forward to the end of the day, not because I was able to go home, but because that was another time where I saw one of my other friends. um, And we walked to the bus to our buses together, able to talk about what happened, unwinding with each other, and especially in, and when I was in sixth grade even, like, at recess, that same friend, we would just sit um, at the side while the other people played, and we'd just talk with each other. So I definitely would um, agree with that. Nice. Um, And for the final one um, for this segment, we have take time off. If burnout seems inevitable, try to take a complete break from work. Go on vacation, use up your sick days, ask for a temporary leave of absence, anything to remove yourself from the situation. Use the time away to recharge your batteries and per- and pursue other methods of recovery. Now, would you agree with that? I would agree 100% with this. Uh, this is that thing, and Mommy will even tell you, that you kind of have to have something to look forward to. Uh, You can't just go to work five days a week, come home, go back to work five days a week and just keep doing that cycle over and over. You need to have something, whether it's spring break in school, summer vacation, uh, a trip to Disney, whatever it is. You have to have that goal that you're shooting for that you know that's the line you've drawn in the sand. Once you get to that point, you're going to de-stress. You're going to clear out, you know, all the cobwebs that are in your head. You're going to go off. You're going to enjoy yourself, and then you're going to come back and start it all over again. Um, Life is cyclic for us, you know, up until the point that you retire probably, and then you go into a different cycle. But you have to work to survive. And in order to cope with that, you have to have these little breaks. 
Um, what would happen to you if you didn't have uh, a winter break or a spring break or a summer break? What, like, how stressful would that be if you just went to school endlessly? I mean, like, for one, it'd be very confusing because you'd just be working 24-7 and you definitely have way more... And you'd have a higher chance of getting burnout. With all the stress that you have to go through, like, you couldn't be working, like, 24-7. Like, like, if you don't have any breaks, like, even in other things, like, you would have to, um, you'd have to take breaks. Taking breaks is the most important thing, and you just need to take breaks and everything. I agree. So when we come back, we'll go with my closing remarks and shout outs. All righty. So for my closing remarks today, I'm just going to say that if you are experiencing any of the symptoms of burnout, um, please do try any of the methods that we've listed today. And if they don't help, then try looking for professional help. We aren't the most professional podcast ever, um, and we we just give out suggestions. So hopefully if you are experiencing burnout, you do get out of it as quickly as possible. Okay. Good, uh, good advice there. Uh, I think that's it for today. Uh, I do want to invite people to check out our long-form articles on Medium at medium.com slash insights into things. You can check us out. Uh, our audio and video podcast. If you're looking for our audio podcast, we're listed as Insights into Teens. Our video podcasts are listed as Insights into Things. You can get us and subscribe to us. We appreciate you subscribing on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, etc., etc., and Amazon now. You can actually get us on uh, your amazon enabled echo devices we won't say your name though um we would also invite you to uh, reach out to us and give us your feedback you can email us at comments at insights into things.com uh, you can get us on twitter at insights underscore things we're available on facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast we do stream uh, at least six days a week. This week we'll be doing seven days because we do, we'll be podcasting tomorrow. You can catch those live on twitch.tv slash insights into things. You can get all of our audio podcasts at podcast.insightsintoteens.com or you can get our video, uh, high res videos at youtube.com slash insights into things or conveniently enough, you can get access to all of that stuff on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. And you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in the Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Very good. We're going to have to record that so that you can plug all the other shows because you're literally the only host that plugs the other shows. Mm, true. So we're going to have to, we're going to have to record a plug. But anyway, that's it for today. Uh, another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.